Now, these are the keys. Number one, holiness. Holiness, utakatif. Don't have any other key. That, that should always be your number one. I know some of us have been teachers of grace. I taught about grace for the last 14 years, at least in Uganda. You will know Uganda is grace, grace. It's by grace. Eh? Ephesians 2 verse 6, it's by grace that you have been saved. That no man post by, it's not by your own works, isn't it? That's in Uganda we were by grace. Even when I came to Kenya, we formed the choir by the grace. Don't confuse between what Jesus did and what you are supposed to do. None of us is going to the cross. None of us. Jesus did what you could not do. He left you to do what you can do. Holiness is not at the level of Jesus. It's at your level. It has to do with your body. Your body is under your control. Do not confuse holiness with righteousness. With righteousness, we have imparted and imputed righteousness. Every theologian knows that. But we don't have imparted and imputed holiness. Holiness is holiness. It's simply shunning evil. And let me tell you, you may, you may think this is small. Sexual immorality has capacity to reduce your performance. <laughs> If you have never tried it, you can try and see whether I am lying. <laughs> you, <laughs> prove me right or wrong by experimenting. And see, you will see a demon and what comes in your mind is, can, it, can this demon really go with what I did? <laughs> you will be tortured for nothing. If you have never tried, my advice, don't. And there is, no, there is no other sin except sexual immorality. At least I know two. Lying and immorality. I don't know any other sin. Those other things you consider as sin, those are ethical issues. Like, like stealing, the Bible does not say that whoever who steals cannot go to heaven. It says whoever who steals must stop. <laughs> or, or I don't read it correctly. It says he must stop. Because Jesus was not offended by thieves on the cross. He said, hey, we will be together. <laughs> but these issues of sex, it says whoever who does that has no share in the kingdom. That's how serious it is. That's why people say, I don't care about what happens to my body. You must take care of your body. It is the number one vessel that God needs. God has never asked for any one of us to give offerings in terms of money and whatever it is. He says, give your body as a living sacrifice. Every other sacrifice is not a life. It's only your body that's living. Every other sacrifice, even offering, depends on you to receive life. But your body is already a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Holy and acceptable. For this is the true act of worship. I'm, I'm encouraging you. Of course, holiness alone does not bring growth. But in the absence of holiness, you don't just stop growing, you close. There's power in information. Hallelujah. I said number one is holiness. That's your number one key. If you have never embraced that, embrace it. But holiness alone cannot give you everything you need. But without it, much of what you need, you can't attain. And do not confuse yourself with other people in the world. When you became born again and you accepted the call, you were consecrated and set apart. You are set apart. That means you are unique. Have you ever read what my wife read to you, Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20? In the large house, there are many vessels. 
of every kind. Some made of clay, some made of good, some made of gold, and some made of silver. And he says, if a man cleanses himself from the rudder, he will become a vessel of nobility. Ready to be used by the master for every good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are vessels, but you determine whether you are a vessel that is ordinary or special. God doesn't make you special. God did not make me special. He called me like he called you. I have been working my way out to become special. Every door of every lodging is open for every customer. And you can make yourself a customer. But you can decide not to enter. It's within your power. Each one of us is given grace. It's given money. You decide what to use it for. Your brother can decide to use his money to drink. You, you can decide to use your money to build a church. All of you are spending money which was given to you as a reward. The choices you make are key. And as politicians say, choices have consequences. <laughs> Praise God. Key number two is character. Your gift can take you higher. It is only character that can maintain you there. What is character? Character is uh, the way, not the way you behave, but the way they know you behave. Reputation. How do they know you? How are you known? You know, when you keep growing like I am, people will say a lot of things about you. Oh, any minister we sit here today, if you grow so quickly, within one year, you are buying five buses, everyone will conclude you are Illuminati. They will conclude. Why some of you have not been called Illuminati is because you are poor. <laughs> how, how much do you have to qualify to be Illuminati? They call you when you have nothing. No, if, not when you have nothing. They are able to see the signs because the devil reads the stars. They are able to see your future. They are, they are just calling you in advance. Now the problem is if you don't qualify to become what they are calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So character is very important. Number three, revelation. Number three, ufunuo. Number one, utakatifu, mbiri, tapia, yatatu, ufunuo. Revelation. Revelation is the guiding of the spirit. Because the spirit must tell you at every time. It is the revelation that helps you from imitating wrong concepts. Ufunuo. Because you might be fasting for 40 days, yet the assignment you are carrying requires 14. You, you are competing like, oh, Jesus went for 40. I will go for 40. Uh -huh. Please, don't go for 40. It is not... It is not fasting that produces your assignment. You have an assignment before fasting. Mm, fasting only, according to what Bishop Oyedebo says, he says, fasting enhances a quick release of the anointing. I have seen ministers of the gospel that have fasted longer and more than I have done, but every time they are asking me, forgive me a hundred, man of God, give me two hundred. Man of God, give me, man of God. I says, ah, but you fasted 40. I have done three. How come my three is feeding you? <laughs> Why? Because when you walk by revelation, you are guided by the spirit. The spirit will tell you the function ahead requires five days. The function ahead requires seven. You don't just wake up like, I want to fast for seven days. Which mountain? Any mountain available. I, we were going for fasting. God said, go fasting for three days. Even when we were given information concerning this meeting. And then I, I was now, because we are building a mountain of prayer at Kehanja. And we wanted to pray from there. But God said, no, I'm sending you to a different mountain. I asked him, which mountain? In my mind, the only thing I was seeing in, before me is heaven's gate. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Revelation is great. It is, it is, uh, you're guided by 
the spirit of God. Because the Bible says in Ephesians, let the spirit of wisdom and revelation be in you. The spirit of revelation and wisdom. If, if you have this, the spirit of revelation, another thing you need to pray for is the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom. Do know how to communicate. Like you men of God, let me tell you, as you will be praying for people, do not be excited by the prophecies. Every prophecy should be subject to the man of God. The Bible says prophecies should be subject to the prophet. Do not berate people to say what they saw and you are putting them online. I saw a man of God berating people and he's saying he has seen visions. Yay! Himself he has not seen anything. He, they have been praying in a group. Young believers, they, are, they, they have seen something. They say, then what, what, what did you see? I, I went to hell. And, and who did you see there? A man of God that relies on the members' prophecies and that becomes your final statement is wrong. You are the one to control whatever comes out. They have a gift. We don't deny. But some of them are children. When you are a child, God shows you according to your age. Even, it is not even, actually it is, it's not even propaganda. It's spiritual childishness. I mean childish. Childish. Something like that. Because these members of your church, they cannot be higher than you. They cannot be greater than you. So whatever they see is your children in a family that are seeing. Now, do you, do you take statements of your children in the house to become final decision for your home? You are the father of the home. And therefore, whatever your children say, say your child can say, Daddy, tomorrow we are going to Krigolis. Another child will say, Daddy, we will go to Kebirigo. Another one will say, Daddy, we will go to Nairobi. You don't now hire three cars. Take it to Nairobi. Take it to, you say, tomorrow nobody's going anywhere. You are the father. You are the father. Because whatever you say is what God is saying. How many of you were called in that church? Then why don't you give the direction? The father is the head. And therefore your head must make the final decision. It's like in a committee. People can say, man, of, uh, we think we can do this, we think, but eventually as the chair, you give the final direction. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you getting the point? Please don't parade church members that they, they are co-pastors with you. Whatever they say, if they have anything serious, let them even write it on paper. Go analyze, bring out what you think cannot cause any argument in the body of Christ. I will never berate church members to tell. They tell me every man of thing. Even in this church. Even church members can tell you about another church member. We saw him naked. Mm -hmm. So did you clothe him? <laughs> uh, I, man of God, I saw Pastor Nani naked. Uh, so what did you do? Because as a person of God, you must take action. <laughs> If you saw in the spirit, my man of God was naked, did you give him something to wear? <laughs> if you run away, you are still a totra. Remain where you belong. These church members, will have their, they have their gifts. They, have, they can see their visions. But that, for the visions to come out, it is you that will take responsibility. If children fail in a school, it's the principle that is transferred. You don't transfer all the teachers. You transfer the principal. If children perform well, the principal takes glory. You don't come as, as the media. You now go to the, every student who at A. How did you perform A? How did you write the answer? You simply go to the principal and say, Buona principal, how did they perform? I mean, you are the manager. Manage your church. Hey, you don't do that. That's why some pastors even fear church members like they see more than them. They don't see anything. Go away and they will see nothing. It is your presence that makes them see. You know, when I started the ministry, God told me, do not be scared about this. These people, are, I am always speaking. 
but you may not hear me. It's like the radio station. God gave me an example of a radio. I, I was given an illustration of a radio because these people were seeing tough things. They were seeing things. Of course, in my spirit, I knew them, but not the way they see them. A pastor cannot... Are you expecting a man of God to be taken by the spirit of prophecy then you lie down and the members are writing? You don't know what's happening. God you can never do you, that to you. A man of God, you are the one now under the spirit of prophecy. Uh, my children, I will cause calamity. So now you wake up, they tell you, man of God, when you were asleep, you saw calamity. <laughs> Is that what you are waiting for? God can never take you to that level. So don't admire the gifts of your children. Those gifts are coming out of them because of your presence. It's because you are, you are involved. If you never came to that place, those gifts could never service. Hey, that you, you, when you are down there, God, they are now telling you, it is you to tell them when they were down there, what was happening? You. Don't be thrown at like, eh, if this woman leaves the church, who will God use to speak? God was using her to speak because you were there. So if she goes, God will bring a new radio. Yes. It's, it's the honor of the kingdom. Oh, if she goes, how will we see? What will we see next? You, uh -huh. What are you saying? You be, like, like if you have serious intercessors in the church, and they are singing, and, and, and they go, you will be singing, at least you are your daughter. God is able to bring a new one. Mm. Now, if, if you are TV in the house, it's affected by, uh, by power, too much uh, current, and it blows. Do, do you stop watching or you go for a new one? You replace. So why are you troubled with one church member? Why? Oh, she was gifted. Whenever she begins to pray, the earth is quaking. So how many cracks can you count on that quaking earth? <laughs> how many? Yeah. Look at the way man of God, you look at me like, do not, don't put your trust on anybody except the God who called you. Hallelujah. Except the God who called you. Hallelujah. It must be God from A to Z. He's your provider. Do not refuse the weakness of putting your trust on people. Number four. Number four, knowledge. You as the minister, you are the principal teacher. And I can encourage you to be teachers of faith. Because I have personally applied faith. You know, God is the supplier of faith. But we are the, the, the people to apply. It is not supplied so that you don't use. It is supplied for you to apply. Yes. And that's how I use faith. And this faith works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you must understand how faith works. So knowledge, in this key of knowledge, you are the custodian of knowledge in your congregation. The congregation will never know more than you. If they are on the internet and everywhere knowing things which you yourself don't know, soon you will differ with them for no reason. But remember, you are a father of the house, but you are again the teacher of the house. The apostle Paul says a man can have a thousand teachers, but can only have one father. But if they don't understand that you are the father, any teacher can be their father. You have a duty to ensure that everybody knows what they should know concerning Jesus and concerning the programs of your church. Amen? So number five, Key number five for the success of ministry is obedience. O obedience. You know, Mary say, obedience is better than sacrifice. I heard Pastor Osoro say, I heard the man of God, Apostle Tedo, say about it. Many of you make sacrifices, serious ones. God told you to go to the mountain and, 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 and spend seven days. You make a serious sacrifice. Then he told you, after fasting for seven days, 
Go and give an offering of 7,000 shillings. Then when it comes to us, say, ah, let me try 1,000 this week. Hey, what is obedience? Obedience is the action you take after you hear the voice of God. When you take a contrary action, it is called disobedience. When you take the correct action, it's called obedience. Obedience is a key. What did you do with the voice you had? Like there could be a probability that some of you are sitting that here. God showed you something and told you, ah, even, this, even though this man of God is, is rich, you are supposed to give this particular offering, maybe 100,000. Until you obey the voice, whatever you came for, you cannot get. With God, there is no my father I have tried. At least I came from a long distance. 70% I have done is you have to do it. Obedience is the action. And when God tells you to, take a, to do something, he doesn't tell you because you are loaded. He tells you because that is what it will take for you to be loaded. God does not tell people to give because they have. He tells them to give because they need to have. Hello? Yes. Say, I'm blessed. Yes. And impressed. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Say, I am blessed. Yes. God has never asked the people to give what they have. He has always asked the people to give because they want to have. If you want to become a father of many nations, then give your own son. Huh? How does that work? I give Isaac for me to become a father of many nations. So does it mean God gives by taking? I think that is the concept. It's by taking that he gives. Hallelujah. Many of you have not really succeeded because God spoke to you about something you were supposed to do, even to a particular church. And you never did it. And, uh, and then you, you started convincing yourself humanly, like, I want to hear the second voice. Did God really say I should do? Now, why do you want God to repeat his speaking? Between you and God, who should be repeating? You want God to be repeating, Father, Come again. Come. <laughs> God speaks once, you must hear twice. Number six. Hard working. Number six key for your success ministry is hard working. A pastor, especially an apostle, you must be involved. You must be involved. I don't respect anybody that comes to church a day that we don't have a service. And he knows we are working, we are doing work that requires our hearts. God says, I will bless the work of your hands, not the work of your heart. Did he say, I will bless the work of your heart? I think what I read is hands. Are hands located in the heart? I think they are here. So God does not bless the No, no, no. He, he blesses. <clears throat> That's where the blessing is. Blessing does not come from how many times you pray. It comes from how long you engage in uh, manual work. This morning when I woke up, uh, this, this one of our members from Kehanja sent me photos. I didn't do me a picture with you. And I was so happy. Said, I have done a few acres and he sent me photos. And, and they are doing very well. You see, like, it's like I poured anointing oil. But in Borea, it's not anointing oil. Don't, don't take anointing oil to your garden. Take fertilizer. <laughs> There's nobody bewitching your crops. It's, they are lacking fertilizer. <laughs> he sent me a photo this morning and the photo is here and I can show you my maize is doing very good ah fertilizer 
You are, if you are not blessed, you are pressed. Don't oppress yourself. Just work. An apostle must work. If you don't have something you're doing, you will be admiring what we have. <laughs> you will be admiring what we have. Hey, man of God, this is a powerful house. Oh, man of God, this is a powerful car. God is with you. God, the same God who is with me is with you also. Hello? Yes. Many of you, you think I, I, I must pretend, go inside some forest and say, I am praying for you. I wear now a sack and I anoint myself with the hashes and I say, I am praying for you. Send your offering right now, right now. Mm -mm. It is expensive to lie. Better say the truth. <laughs> When you are lying, you become a comedian unnecessarily. You are acting unnecessarily. It's very expensive to lie. Truth sets people free and sets your money free, sets your life free. Don't go to a forest and wear a sack. Eh? You are in a sack at night somewhere, seated, and you're saying, I am on the mountain, and you are very sure you are not on the mountain. God is saying right now, Send your offering. I, I watched one man of God, because those of us who have TV stations, we watch one another to see what is going on. So I said, let me watch the Nairobi guys. I said, <laughs> because soon I'm, I'm taking our TVs to Nairobi. I said, let me watch and see what is happening. <clears throat> hey, I, I watched one man of God, and people were sending in money, and then he was prophesying. You, you, yeah, you send money, you, you, you prophesy. I'm, I'm not saying, maybe if God gave them that, I have no problem. For me, I have no problem with whatever you do. The Apostle Paul, some preach out of anything. Some preach out of Kuchipatia. Others preach out of good way. So it is you to choose why you preach. You can preach and get a few coins and your reward is done at one But preach out of good will. So it was seated there and, and somebody... It was prophesying for people. Somebody sent one thousand. He said, yes, yes. The Lord is saying, you will prosper before the end of July. I did not run that was in June. You will prosper before the end of July. There is a tender coming your way, which is going to make you a millionaire. Another person sent 50. He says, the spirit of poverty is around your home. He said, <laughs> so the, it, it, it is the amount that determines the kind of spirit in your own. Ah! I said no. So if, if, I, if I made a mistake and I sent them 10 pop, as rich as I am, I know what you could have said. Your family is collapsing. Be <laughs> <laughs> is that what you want to do? I am not sure that that's why God sent you here. I am persuaded that God sent you here so that together we can combine effort and, and, and bring clarity to the body of Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, even though you came here for me to pray for you, but I'm also asking for your support. That wherever God has apportioned you, stand on the truth no matter what. Yes. I better die saying the truth than being alive to propagate lies. One time I told the person, if I found Jesus and the devil, then Jesus wanted me to, uh, to, to get in, in, in a mkokoteni and take me to a particular ditch. And the devil wants to get me into a plane and fly me away. I could not risk going to the, with the devil, even though his way of transport is fair. I would get to the wheelbarrow, of Jesus and go to the ditch because wherever Jesus is, that's where heaven is. If I meet him in the toilet, I'm in heaven. Hallelujah. If I meet the devil in paradise, I will know I'm in hell. Yes. Because hell is where the devil is. Not the magnificence and the beauty of the place. I make very, very hard choices. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every man of God must work very hard. Whatever your hands find it to do, do it and serve as if you are serving the Lord. This church, this church, 
was not built by people who are not me. This particular structure. I have participated from digging here from day one with that champ. And when young people, even Bonnie and, and the like, could get tired in the evening, I could proceed the worst night. My wife became so kind to me because I spent nights here. This place was very hard. It required men who have strength, like myself. And therefore, I had to stay here. I, because there is no way your projects can be finished in the timing of God if you are not in the forum. Amen. No way. No way, man of God. Your projects can never be finished in the timing of God if you are not in the forum. If you give it to the fullness alone, they will build something which you will wish to demolish. You must be there. If, if it is this thing, when it was done, I had to do it myself. What the carpeting here, I, I, I will be there. Not that I don't have the power to delegate, but there are things you don't delegate. Like, like if you are, you are a father of a home, there are issues you can delegate, like washing your children's clothes, you can delegate. You can delegate like people digging in your farm. But do you delegate things that happen in the bedroom? Say, no, no, this watchman can take care of my wife until I come. Mm -mm. <laughs> you must know what to delegate and what not to delegate. <laughs> How do you delegate everything? Even, even preaching. Men, some men of God don't believe that they have what it takes to preach. I have preached in this church for eight years every day. Except when God tells me, bring this one. Bring this one. I have preached here every day. And there are times, men of God can tell you, there's a time I preached in this church every day for one year. And God was giving me new messages. Some of you, because of some small trouble, you say, ah, this Sunday, I don't feel like I can preach. I am becoming monotonous. How, do you become, how does a father become monotonous to a home? Oh, yeah. How? how, how? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you, you can go and live and tell your brother to be in church as you come. So that you, when the kidogo and your wife are Yeah. Huh? You are the father of that home. You can't become monotonous. But you know, if I don't bring guests to preach, members cannot increase. Guests don't increase. I wrote a book in 2016 called Exclusive Breastfeeding. There's a particular age that you cannot hand over your church. Because people will feed your church with something and it cannot grow. Kuna, kuna umrifrani, mutoto hakiwa, uwesu kamurusu anyo maziwa ya ngombe. Maziwa ni maziwa, lakini maziwa ya mama ni tofauti na maziwa ya ngombe. We call that age exclusive breastfeeding. Six months. No porridge, no nothing, unless the mother is dead. <laughs> like now, you, you, you look at uh, Apostle and Prophet Barak, oh, the man preaches well. Come next Sunday, come next Sunday. Ah, you go preach where you are given. That Sunday, and I preach where. <laughs> I say, finally, strategy. Strategy, I gave it as the, the last one, but it should have been the first one. Strategy, you must be very strategic. Have some concepts of strategic management. Make some analysis. Hello? There is, there is a, in, in management at university, there is something we call uh, the, the, the SWOT analysis. SWOT, SWOT analysis, where you make an analysis of your strength, your weaknesses, available opportunities, and the threats to your ministry. It's SWOT, SWOT analysis. You must be able to sit down and make an analysis. What is my strength? Spiritually, this is my strength. Physically, this is my, my strength. What weaknesses do I have? You analyze them. Probably, according to the environment where I am, I never went to school, and therefore people may not really impress me at first. But what can I do? What are the possible opportunities? What can I do to make them understand who I am? Yeah, so you look at it, Pastor. What are the strengths? How, which area am I strong? Am I strong in speaking in English or Swahili? You know, that is it. Am I strong in 
in teaching or in preaching? Am I strong in deliverance or miracles? Which is my area of gifting? Ah, yes, I am called. But what, is, what gifts do I have? Am I good in speaking in tongues? Like I know Pastor, Pastor Baraka is good as an intercessor. That's what he does. He prays. He can, he can pray for one year non-stop. Strategy. Strategy you must. God can show you that you only to have a big church. He can show you. But the question you must answer. How? Where? When? With who? So what are you, What am I supposed to do? Like when God showed me a big church, I, I thought in my mind that number one, I would do a crusade. In the stadium, because God has said it's a big church. When I went back to prayer, God told me, don't attempt to go to the stadium now. Because the stadium is too big. People will be too small. And people will walk with the image that this man of God doesn't have anybody. You know, some of you, you don't ask God where. God can show you, you're going to have a big crusade. Many people will come. And then you imagine it's supposed to be in the crusade. Imagine you are in a number stadium with 100 people. And the stadium is supposed to carry how many capacities? 350. The stadium carries 350,000 people. And you are there, 100 people. Somebody will imagine his workers trying to clean the stadium. <laughs> the study but when you are 100 people you go to a place which is smaller and you will look packed that, that is the psychology of ministry so God told me don't go to the stadium now it is too hard for you go to a small field I went to some offices outside a small field which could fit five tents I put five tents and people were packed from that time, people said, Pastor Marwabe, hey, ask people. Ah, he asked people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Strategy. You must be a strategist because that's why when you go to a theological seminary, they teach you psychology. They teach you sociology. They teach you all those kind of things. They are, you, sometimes you wonder in class, how applicable are they? Where am I going to use psychology? Where am I going to use philosophy? It is applicable everywhere. But you must be loaded to see. So in his strategy, if God tells you, you will begin ministry. When? Where? How? With who? And how do I raise? If God tells you, I'm going to give you a million, like God told some of you, you're becoming millionaires. Mm -hmm. When are you going to become millionaires? How? If God tells you now, you're supposed to do a crusade. And the cost of the crusade is 35 million Uganda shillings. So are you going to wait for a donor from the US? You are on the internet. Father, show me the right person. Father, in the name of Jesus. You are like a Jesus, as I open my eyes, may I see the person? Jesus. <laughs> Don't do that. It doesn't work like that. If, if you have 100 members in the church, and God tells you you are raising that 5 million, he has seen the potential of the available people. That that 5 million will be raised by you. But you must come out with a correct strategy. Like when God wants us to raise 10 million here, he, he gives us a way forward. He says, okay, just announce people who can give 100,000. Give them a, a time frame. They will be depositing small, small. By the time it is done, you have 10 million. Like when, when we were on the mountain one day, God told me, when you go back home, make sure you buy a bus. I said, go, go buy a bus. I said, buy a bus? How can that be? So when I came, we came from the mountain on a Thursday, and um, on, on a Friday, I saw a bus being auctioned. Then I knew this is the bus God had, had seen, and he had put it on auction for me. So I, then I, I came to church on Saturday. I told the members, next week as you come, every one of you come with 1,000. Just 1,000. You don't need the, uh, the 2 million from one person. Every member, 1,000 anybody can afford. 
So the following week, they came with a thousand faithfully, every one of them, because God had said, you know, when you are packed up with God, everyone in response. Yeah, when you have God is packing, they brought in faithfully. That day, within one hour, we had 1.5 million. Then I, I told them, next week, bring the top up. So I, the, I went with the 1.5 million. I paid the owner. We brought the bus. The following week, they brought the remaining amount. We bought this bus we used yesterday within one hour. One hour. It was one hour. The second bus, I bought it myself, but it was a strategy. I bought it within one year, but I was the one having it within that year as I'm buying it. Strategy. You must be, when God gives you assignment, do not pretend that you know everything. Ask him, how am I going to do it? What will it take? Who and who should I see? You don't just imagine with a committee, we will see the governor, we will see the MP, we will see the MCA. No, did God tell you to see them? You will go to some of them and you will realize they are also coming to see you because they believe you are loaded. Please, strategy is very important. Some of you should en enroll in some strategic management classes or you can attend. I at university, I used to teach management and uh, I discovered that uh, Management is, uh, is very important for ministry. You know, ministry, besides being spiritual, is a project. And uh, it has a, a cycle. For ministry to grow, you know, when you have church members, you should never forget that they are human beings. And it's what we call human resource management. Human beings are resources. Yes. Hello? But a pastor is not a resource. Is a source. <laughs> These are resources that God gives you. Advice, because you are the source, tell them what they can do to become resourceful. You are managing human beings. If they are involved in doing something, then you have resources. Hallelujah. There's nothing like a poor pastor and a rich pastor. No. It's a question of how you organize yourself, regardless of your allocation. Because I said yesterday, the other day, your allocation determines the allocation. Therefore, there's nothing like I am a poor pastor. Mm -mm. Anybody can become anything anywhere. <laughs>